Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. Amber Heard, what is she? Part 5. We now turn to the issue of the $7 million donation. You will probably be aware that as a consequence of the divorce settlement, money was paid to Amber Heard, and she stated, As described in the restraining order and divorce settlement, money played no role for me personally, false humility perhaps, and never has, except to the extent that I could donate it to charity. Potential exhibition of emotional empathy, or is it fake cognitive empathy done for facade management? And in doing so, hopefully help those less able to defend themselves. As reported in the media, the amount received in the divorce was $7 million, and $7 million is being donated. Of course, there was then an accusation from Depp, where he accused her of pocketing the settlement and repeatedly lying about giving it all to charity. There were meant to be two donors of it, and the ACLU refused to cooperate, but the Children's Hospital confirmed that to date they had received just $100,000, and they had contacted Amber Heard to find out what was going on. In light of this, her legal team stated some time ago, Mr. Depp's effort to plant stories in the media criticising Amber for not yet fulfilling all the donations she pledged to charity is yet another desperate attempt to divert attention from the UK court's findings relating to allegations of Mr. Depp committing domestic abuse and violence. Amber has already been responsible for seven figures in donations to charitable causes and intends to continue to contribute and eventually fulfil her pledge. Note here, it's clear that she hadn't handed over the money because it stated that she would eventually fulfil her pledge. Furthermore, it also it accuses him of deflecting, but of course she is doing so through her own lawyers by referencing her other charitable acts. We're not interested in those other charitable acts. We're interested in whether she's handed over the $7 million that she said she would do. The statement continued by stating, however, Amber has been delayed in that goal because Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against her, and consequently she's been forced to spend millions of dollars defending Mr. Depp's false accusations against her. Now, to my mind, that doesn't add up. By Quite basically, first of all, since she says she's not yet fulfilled the donations, then it's quite clear she hasn't made them, and Depp was correct in stating that. It also is rather awkward, because one of the things that caused Johnny Depp a problem was Mr. Justice Nichols' assessment in the original libel action that he believed that she'd made the seven million donation and it was hardly the act one would expect of a gold digger. And therefore he accepted that this had been done and it went to a finding of credibility with regard to her both as a witness and as a person generally. Now, whether that would have ever been sufficient to form the grounds of a successful appeal, I doubt. But what it does point out is she stated an intention to hand over the money, she received the money, and then did nothing with it, bar $100,000 being donated. What caused her to stop? Her own sense of entitlement, her narcissistic trait of selfishness, perhaps. Debt paid her the money, that's under no doubt. She admits that she received it. Then, simply enough, in this modern age, once the money had been received, all she needed to do was do tappity-tap-tap-tap and make a transfer to the relevant person, presumably able to do it from her computer, to send it to the charities that were to receive them. She didn't do so. She's got the money and didn't send it on. Therefore, it would suggest, first of all, that the fact that she was going to make the donation but didn't do it smacks of future faking, the use of a future act to control the now. It relates to facade management. It also suggests the telling of lies, saying that she had donated it, when actually it's clearly the case that she hadn't. Moreover, there is then an attempt to blame, shift and deflect by saying, well, the only reason actually that I've not paid it is because you, Mr. Johnny Depp, have gone and sued me again have gone and sued me, and therefore I need the money to defend myself against your claims. The problem with that is the divorce settlement was circa 2017, and he didn't sue for defamation 
until 2019. So two years elapsed. Therefore, to come up with this excuse that she wasn't able to pay the money because she needed to keep it as a fighting fund to deal with the defamation action clearly doesn't stack up and is deflection and a lie. To my mind, the behaviour surrounding this donation is critical. It demonstrates an attempt to exhibit emotional empathy, but then falling through, and then once having been exposed for that failure, which is a threat to control, she seeks to nullify it by telling a lie, which doesn't stack up. Furthermore, the lie is not a particularly sophisticated one. A simple examination of dates undoes it. That is a material point, and I'd invite you to keep that at the front of your mind as we continue. Behaviour around Heard's 2016 deposition. I've watched footage of this, and I may well analyse this separately. But she refused originally to go under oath for her deposition, crying, yelling and screaming in defiance. She showed up at 11.50am Saturday for a 10am disposition. Arriving late shows a lack of emotional empathy, a sense of entitlement and a lack of accountability. Certain narcissists are habitually unpunctual. She was there until around 9pm, but never even walked in the deposition room, where lawyers, a court reporter and videographer were waiting. According to legal documents that were filed by Johnny Depp's lawyer, Laura Vassa, Heard repeatedly refused to submit to questioning, which demonstrates a need to nullify a threat to control, because the questioning is that threat to control, if you try to hold a narcissist to account by asking us questions, you're threatening our sense of control. At 2pm, Vassar and company wanted Amber Heard to leave the adjourning office, where she'd been waiting and enter the conference room, so the deposition could begin. But she refused to enter. At 5.30pm, Vassar again requested Amber Heard to enter the deposition room, and again she refused. She never went in the room. Instead, according to Vassar, she began crying and carrying on in the adjoining office. Vassa says that Heard also refused to turn over documents that she had requested. Therefore, as a consequence of that, this demonstrates a need to nullify a threat to control, operating with a sense of entitlement, an absence of accountability, an absence of emotional empathy, doling out of pity play. She, of course, later did submit to deposition. As I mentioned, I might go through and analyse that. But one thing that did strike me from it was that Repeatedly, while she's being questioned, two things stuck out. First of all, the appearance of the smirk, which, if you'd like to understand more about that, listen to the my video, The Narcissist Smirk, and also the fact that she was eating while she was meant to be giving answers, which is rude and unpleasant behaviour, an exhibition of bad manners. And therefore, that demonstrates that, although she might operate a facade at times, it appears to be intermittent. She doesn't give two figs about stuffing her face with whatever it was that she was eating, pausing while she does so, ignoring, in essence, the fact that she was there to undertake an important deposition, exhibiting a lack of accountability and a sense of entitlement. Heard's behaviour on movie sets has also left something to be desired. Apparently, it was alleged that Heard would ill-treat people on movie sets. She would turn up late, sense of entitlement, lack of accountability, and absence of emotional empathy, and would turn up intoxicated, lack of accountability. She would apparently argue with the cast and crew, argumentativeness, sense of entitlement, ultimately hampering the production of the project. The actress reportedly tried to sabotage her new unannounced project when the director tried to talk with her about her drinking and tardiness. The email stated, she threatened to end the director's career. I assume she meant by making phony allegations against him. Use of threat. Heard apparently evaded deposition by American psycho producer Christopher Hanley in 2016 for allegedly breaking a contract and interfering with the film's production. She also reportedly denied appearing in several scenes, including a romantic lovemaking scene, as mentioned in the lawsuit. She postponed her deposition numerous times, apparently, offering various excuses in court filings, including that she was attending an engagement party 
in New Jersey and flying to London for a costume fitting and would not return until June 17, 2016. Yet days later signed a declaration under penalty of perjury in Los Angeles on June 13th and was photographed in West Hollywood on June 16, 2016. Telling of lies. Lack of accountability. Another incident which goes to exhibiting the behaviour of Amber Heard are certain blackmail allegations. An incident that may have sabotaged her career is when she reportedly blackmailed her 2018 movie London Fields director Michael Cullen to cancel the movie's premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival. She apparently countersued the producer for using a body double in intimate scenes. It's believed that London Fields proved to be a complete dud owing to Amber Heard's lack of acting skills. Apparently, the allegation of blackmail, if accurate, demonstrates use of threat, sense of entitlement, absence of accountability, absence of emotional empathy. More behaviours going to the heart of the nature of this individual. But let's take a little glance at her use of social media to see what that tells us. And apparently her Instagram grid presents a familiar Hollywood showreel, award ceremony selfies with Elizabeth Moths and Aquaman star co-star Nicole Kidman, self-promotion, grandiosity, use of social media, laughing on the sofa with James Corden, also posing on the red carpet with Ariana Huffington, Camilla Cabello and Helen Mirren. Cara Delevingne appears regularly, as do transgender activists Corey Ray and Io Tillett Wright, who Heard was seen laughing with on a yacht on a recent holiday. All appears to be facade management, showmanship. Heard took Ray as her date to the 2019 Golden Globes and Bestie Wright, an LGBT rights campaigner and author. Again, facade management. Another witness to Depp and Heard's relationship was the actress's spiritual BFF, Raquel Pennington, a yoga fanatic and jewellery designer who's been pictured alongside Heard at every stage of her divorce proceedings. It was Pennington, as her next-door neighbour and friend of 18 years plus, who reportedly threw herself between the couple in 2016 when Depp was drunk and high, and Pennington, who was pictured collecting a tearful Heard from an L.A. courtroom after the actress filed a restraining order quite possibly a lieutenant and exhibition of pity play. The social media showing lots of pictures of herself is common behaviour of a narcissist or a narcissistic individual. It shows a sense of entitlement, the need to triangulate people with the pictures for the purpose of assertion of control and the drawing of fuel. And therefore, it creates further a particular picture. It's worthwhile delving into these past events to put alongside with the evidence that has arisen from the trial because it comes from different sources, not just Johnny Depp. And the fact that it comes from different sources paints a picture. If one person is repeatedly accusing you of particularly bad behaviour, that might be accurate. It may well be the case that they are correct. But the difficulty that arises is that there is that instance of he said, she said. But where an individual has repeatedly got people criticising their behaviour, providing evidence of the instances that have been described in parts four and five, it really does start to paint a picture. And it is common with the narcissist that there is a supporting cast, if you will, of hurt, disgruntled, annoyed pissed off people who have been subjected to the unpleasant behaviour of the narcissist. Of course, the narcissist doesn't see it this way, and the narcissist will dismiss them. Lessers will invariably just say, they're just envious of my success, or they're just all assholes." Mid-rangers tend to be more selective, and will go through the list more generally, or more specifically, stating, well, I've always had a difficult relationship with my mother, my brother, he's just uh, out for what he can get, trying to trade off my fame. That teacher has never liked me because 
she's envious of how good-looking I am, and so on and so forth. And the mid-ranger will either dismiss certain groups, they're all haters, they're racist, they're misogynist, and alongside that, home in on specific personal individuals and explain why they cannot be believed and how they've just got it in for the suspected narcissist and therefore what they have to be said what they have to say should just be discounted the fact is it starts to create a substantial body of evidence it isn't the case that all of these people have got together and corroborated and said hey i tell you what why don't we do down amber heard you make up a story i'll make up a story that those people over there that we've never met before let's get them to make up a story it starts to create a particular picture and accordingly that body of evidence starts to become somewhat compelling. And that's why it's important to include this testimony from other people. We're now going to move on to what has been happening in the trial. There's a lot that has come forward, and I'm not going to include everything, as that would take far too long. Instead, I'm taking selective parts from the various witnesses that appeared so far, and, of course, from what Jenny Depp has had to say, as we continue to understand what Amber Heard is. Join me in part six.